Hello and welcome to the File Catalyst Workflow Webinar. Thank you all for joining. Uh, this webinar, I'm going to try to do it in half an hour. I uh, have lots of materials, so let's get started. So hello, my name is John Tkachevsky. I'm the president and co-founder of Unlimitech, the maker of the File Catalyst product line. Uh, the company has been around for 15 years and we started it on the premise of businesses needing to send and transfer large files. And we pretty much stayed on course for the last 15 years and developed very uh, several very exciting technologies for transfer, allowing businesses to transfer large files. We do have a very nice blog, which I participate often as well. So if you go to our website and look up our blog, you'll find very interesting articles regarding file transfer, software development, as well as security and IT policy stuff. Uh, so I, the, uh, on the agenda, I'm going to go quickly through our technology just to give you an idea what's the acceleration and why it works. Uh, we do have several other webinars that cover this, so I'm going to go quickly through this. I really want to concentrate on the workflow P part, as well as show you a demo and uh, some configuration options in workflow that you can do. If you have any questions during my webinar, feel free to uh, feel free, free to uh, ask ask them in the go to webinar question, and I will get to them at the end of my presentation. So if you not if you have not heard about us yet, what we do is we provide uh, accelerated file transfer. So we will uh, our technology will allow you to always maximize your bandwidth. So regardless of where you're sending the files to or from. So for example, if you use FTP and you want to send files from one computer to another locally, everything will be fast. But if you use FTP now to send from one computer that is let's say in LA and the second computer is in New York, now the, the, the transfer speed will slow down uh, considerably. And this is what we uh, solve with our technology. We will give you the ability to you know, leverage your full bandwidth speed regardless of the network conditions or how far your network is apart. Uh, with, with this comes you know, several other benefits like you know, uh, bandwidth, uh, my, uh, bandwidth management so you can literally say for each transfer how fast you want to go or to speed them up, to slow them down and ability to integrate into you know cloud storage for example like like s3 if you if you need to uh, transfer files into that into into a cloud environment uh, how we do the acceleration I once again I have several other webinars on this I just want to tell you that uh, we don't use TCP on our transfers we use UDP and uh, TCP is a very linear process so when you send a packet of data you have to wait for an acknowledgement and as you can see here in the graphic that on the line you can only see one packet of data going from the source to destination and then the acknowledgement has to come back so the further the two points are the longer the acknowledgement takes and less data flows on the line what we do is we use UDP to transfer the files so we move several blocks of data at the same time on the line as you can see the line is much more busy there's three blocks going through and we don't wait for the acknowledgement. We only we only acknowledge exceptions, so problems that happened, and therefore we're immune to latency and uh, latency and packet loss in a sense as well, because we don't uh, a packet loss for our event that just means a retransmission doesn't mean necessarily we're gonna slow down the speed of transfer. So. Uh, uh, so speed improvements, I mean, uh, there's a lot of charts out there. We have a calculator on our website that you can punch in your own specifics uh, on your bandwidth and the latency you're experiencing. Uh, here are just some examples. LA to New York to send a 10 gig file over a gigabit connection uh, with 70 milliseconds latency. It will take five and a half hours with FTP and with us will take just, on, just uh, under two minutes. Uh, once again, this is because gigabit is very fast speed and latency will slow down FTP to the point where, you know, the transfers are not feasible. Uh, take another example, LA to Rio. Uh, now you have 130 milliseconds latency, the round trip time for the data. And you can see now FTP is super slow. It takes 15 and a half, 16 hours 
and we're still the same speed. So regardless of your uh, scenario, we can always give you, we'll always give you the best op possi possible uh, speed, regardless of where the two points are and, 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 and the network conditions. So what is File Catalyst Workflow? Well, File Catalyst Workflow is a, it's an online portal or web-based uh, web portal for moving files. Uh, it has three main themes in there, or th three main functionalities that you can do with Workflow. First one is the ability to submit files. So imagine a user wants to dr uh, submit or send you some files to your organization. The user particularly doesn't care what the f where the files are going. All they need to do is just perhaps fill out certain specifics like metadata information, then select the file and click send. And the user couldn't care less where they go. They just get dropped off into some black box and the user is done. Uh, the second one is the ability for users to send files to an email address. So in this case, the user will fill out the email address of the receiver, recipient, or add several email addresses, attach the file, and click send. And the receiver on this side, recipient, will get a download link in the email with instructions how to download the file. Uh, like this, we can you know, send files of any size without uh, being limited by uh, maximum file size attachments that are usually set on the email servers. And the third case scenario is the ability to create shared folders, shared web folders. So imagine you have a group, a user or a group of users that using a web browser want to log on and be able to see a, a folder and then they can either upload files to it, download, delete files, uh, and so and so forth and the system keeps track of all of that for them so so if a user a logs on to a folder B uh, the, the, everyone will know what that user did whoever's part of that group so these are really the three themes there's a lot of uh, you know options and permutations within these themes and that's what workflow tries to address is all these uh, nuances that you might have within all within all these workflows. Uh, this slide it's just really system requirements for workflow. Uh, I added it here so for those that are going to be watching this later on offline, they know what is what is needed. But it's a, a regular you know a dual core uh, machine with six gigs of RAM, 80 gigs of disk space. And OS can be either Windows uh, Server or Windows 2003. Can even run on, uh, you know, Windows 7, uh, Mac OS X, Linux also works. We do require 64-bit architecture, so we can take advantage of that six gigs of RAM. Um, with, with without that, we can only take uh, advantage of I think two gigs. We need Tomcat 7. But if you're using the Windows installer, you don't really need that because all you have to do is uh, just uh, install our Windows installer that will deploy your Tomcat, uh, your MySQL, uh, all together bundled so you can just quickly use it. On, Lin on Linux, however, you would have to install Tomcat and Java and, uh, and so forth. Um, so... On the Java requirement, again, it's uh, Oracle Java that requires it's uh, Java 7. Uh, without, uh, we cannot, we do not support OpenJDK, and we of course need internet connectivity. We've properly configured firewall rules so people from the internet can access these files. On the client side, it's a lot easier. They just need a recent web browser. Uh, they need an email account if they want to receive emails, uh, and they need the Java plugin. Uh, ideally seven or higher, uh, only if they need to do acceleration. If they're not doing acceleration, they don't need the Java plugin at all. They will be just using regular HTTP uploads. And of course, some kind of a broadband internet connection so we can actually send some files because with dial up, this is not possible, usually not possible. So let's go through some of the uh, features here in workflow. I'll go into the demo where you can actually see all of this, but I just want to give you uh, an idea how everything works. So, uh, so in workflow, you have two types of things. You have either transport uh, components. So this would be your Java applets, for example, for uploading, downloading, or the file area or the two-way applet. You'll have also the form upload, 
which is a HTML5 native upload component for those that don't have Java or don't wish to use Java. There is no acceleration there, but it allows the user to at least uh, transfer files without the need for Java. Uh, we have our integration with hot folders. So those that are familiar with the file catalyst direct with our automation tools, the hot folder can also plug in into workflow. Um, and also we have a mobile and an SDK uh, integration. So you can, uh, from a mobile device, also submit uh, jobs and an SDK in a Java SDK where you can submit jobs programmatically into workflow. So this is useful for those that need to, for example, send a file and generate a download email link. Uh, the SDK is useful for that. The intelligence side. So these are these are the components in 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 uh, on the web interface that allow you to control what to what happens when. So you have your fields. Those will be your metadata fields. You can create as many as you want, as many custom meta fields as you want. Uh, you have your order forms. These are your actually the collections of fields. So you, you you create an order form that contains several fields, and once again you have you can have several as many order forms as needed. Uh, FC sites or FTP sites is how many FC servers you may have uh, you may have on your system. Keep in mind that sometimes an FC site may be the same server, just a different username and password. So you may point these users to a different uh, location on your storage or your NAS. Then you can group users to, into together, users and groups, you can group them together to uh, give them common functionality. For example, shared folders, uh, your jobs. This is your collection of your files attached with uh, fields filled out by the user and then you have your status and file areas. Uh, file areas are really the, the web-based shared folders that you can create. And file areas can be either personal for a user or can be uh, assigned to a group for shared uh, collaborati collaboration type of uh, thing. So for file transfer options, uh, you have our Java applets. Uh, you can do uploads, downloads. You can do, you have a file area applet for uh, sharing folders. Uh, the protocol detection, it can, applets can automatically detect whether UDP, FTP, or HTTP is possible. They will automatically retry and automatically resume a transfer. So you don't have to, a user doesn't uh, have to do anything. The, the applets will just try several times to upload the file and they will do a full checksum or MD, MD5 checksum and a delta on the upload. So it's, as you can see, these are much more advanced components than that like, for example, just a, a native browser uh, option here where it's just a form upload. So the form upload is just a native form upload. It gives you a size. We've seen users doing more than two gigs, but we only still support two gigs because not all web browsers can do it. Uh, there's no need for Java, of course. And of course, there's no try or no resume capability here because that's just regular uh, browser-based uploads. And then you have also on the download side, you can also present the users with just HTTP download links. Uh, the nice part about this is once again, you don't need Java for this and the users can get to the files without installing Java. Hot folder, this is for our automation uh, side. So if you want to schedule an, an upload into workflow, you can. Uh, you can synchronize folders, including folders, your group folders and your file areas uh, with your local system. So this kind of gives you a sort of this Dropbox experience uh, with this system and uh, an ability to upload, you know, new jobs where you can put metadata or upload directly into file areas. On the mobile side, we have mobile applications. If you look for File Catalyst on iTunes or uh, Google Play, you will find our application. You can download it, point it to your file catalyst workflow instance, and you're off to the races. Uh, some future development we're going to work. We're going to we're planning to work on hot folder job downloads. So when you send files to a specific user and that user has a hot folder attached, that hot folder will automatically initiate a download. So this is something on our works, as well as the uh, iOS job submission. So right now you can submit jobs only in Android app, but not on iOS. iOS, you can only upload to a file area, for example. So to, for workflow components, so uh, everything starts really with the fields. So a field is a piece of information that the user has to enter on the form. 
there's top, two types of fields. There's uh, fields that are typically just informational. That means user has to type something in, either text, uh, provide a text or a date or a number or a dropdown. And there's workflow modifier fields. Those fields are special fields embedded in the order form that modify the behavior of the particular job. So for example, if you have um, a recipient email field uh, attached to an order form, that, that the presence of that field would automatically generate an email sent to the recipient uh, for downloading these files. Uh, you could have a site selector field. So a user, when the user enters information on their, on their form, there is, could be a site selector field where a user can select which site they want to upload files to. Um, you could also have these fields uh, hidden and locked, meaning that the users cannot change them, but they are there to help you customize your workflow, to customize your workflow. Uh, some other workflow modifiers would be job expiry or a download password or automatically generated PIN. So download password field will prompt the user to enter a download password for uh, recipient, uh, that recipient email recipient will have to provide before they can access the files an automatically generated PIN. It's like download password, but the system just generates a PIN automatically and attaches it to the email. So these are some of the uh, workflow modifiers. Um, so order forms, think of it as a collection of your fields. So you put a, a several of these fields together on one order form, and they are all defined by you as the, sy the system administrator, and it defines certain workflow for, for this particular user. Uh, you can have uh, job fields where fields are only like job wide and you can have per file fields, meaning certain file, uh, so if one, once a user uploads a file, they can specify properties for this file. So you can create a field for a drop down field, for example, for each file that user uploads, they need to then specify some information. Um, and you can also create multiple pages of order forms. So once you get into a problem where you have several several fields that the user enter or you can make multiple pages of these order forms so sites uh, sites is basically any file catalyst direct server or any third-party FTP site uh, we have these connected to some users have defined five six ten sites on on their file catalyst workflow why because every user might have a different requirement one user will need to always upload files to storage a. Another user might be only allowed to send files via email to anywhere. Uh, third user might have only access to a shared folder. So you can create all these sites and then assign them to specific users uh, depending on their, what their requirement is. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that a server could be same server, like literally same physical server, but it could be just a different username and password on the server so it points to a totally different path and that's very often also that our clients will do is just create two sites that point to the same server but with to a different path because they need they wish one group of users to upload to a different path than than than, than, than the first uh, you can also dynamically assign paths to the storage so depending on what user enters on the order form you can mo you can customize the path where things are uploaded. So everything by default is always uploaded to forward slash uh, FC web forward slash username forward slash job ID. And that's the default upload path. But using the dynamic uh, path assignment based on the information from the order form, then if a user selects in a drop down option A, that redirects to a totally different path on your storage. And then also sites uh, store all the XML and PDF files. So whenever there's a new job created, uh, there's an XML file created with all the information they entered, uh, file names, and it's also uploaded to a specific location. Uh, this allows you to create to uh, pick this up from other backend systems and actually use this information for for deeper integration into your own workflow. Groups, so groups are really groups as a set of users, but in the sense of workflow, a group is also can be also a shared folder. So uh, if you need users to share a folder, you can create a group, say that this group has a shared folder, and then everybody that's part of the group will have access to, uh, to, to, to the shared folders. 
Uh, you also have permissions on the groups, so uh, you know one group can upload files and download files from a file from a path. Second group can only download files from a path, and they, it could be the same path, just a different because the permissions are set differently. Then the users have different options for for different security measures for uploading or downloading. Your jobs is to you take your you take all the fields that you entered on the order form. You take your files, you put it together in a bundle, and this creates a job. And it's just all your transactional information, including all the history behind it. Status, it's the you have some automatic triggers on the status. So, for example, once a job user has filled the form and sent uploaded the files, the the job is moved automatically from incomplete to sent. And once their email recipient downloads all the files in the email, then we'll go from sent to shipped automatically. That means everybody downloaded the files. And if there's, of course, any errors whatsoever, it can also be flipped into an error status. Users, those are your uh, users defined on File Catalyst workflow. Uh, you can have them lo uh, locally authenticated with the database or use ILDAP or Active Directory. Single sign-on is as well supported. Uh, you can assign different functionality to users. So as I mentioned before, one user is allowed to submit files. Another user is allowed to only send files via e to an email. Uh, third user might have only access to a file area. And there's also the admin users. You can also mix and match. So a user can, one user can have access to everything, to do everything, versus another one that can only submit files. And these assignments can be done directly on a user or to a multiple, to, to a group. Uh, file areas are the shared web folders. So I'm, just to give you a, how this all looks on uh, sort of on, on the, from a big picture, before I get into a demo here, but you have user authentication, you have your security, you have your user view or administrative view, your upload and downloads, your sites, and this is the, your entire file catalyst workflow. Uh, the diagram here kind of gives you also the relationships between all these entities I just talked about. So for the demo, what I will, uh, I'm going to show you a few, uh, a few, uh, I will show you here uh, a few uh, uh, options. So first of all, I'm going to show you the basic use case. So a user wants to send files to an email address. So I'm going to log in here as a user that I already created. I'm going to click on new job. And remember these order forms? Well, I have two order forms in the system. I'm going to now just show you the distribution one. The distribution is the email address one. So I can enter my emails I want to send this to. As you can see here, I have an address book. The address book can be populated from LDAP. In this case, I have nothing here yet, but uh, this can be a global address book or a private address book. Here are the files. And now I can click on Upload Files here to, to send the files to somebody. So here's my, I'm adding just a couple of, uh, couple of files. Here's nothing, nothing really too big. And you can see I'm sending the files, and I'm done now. I have files have been sent. So if I want to flip my uh, uh, role and now become the recipient of these files, all I have to do is just go into my email. I already configured my email to be receiving these files. So he, you, here is the package that I received from that sender. The reason I get three emails is that I'm also the administrator of the system, and I'm also the user. So that's why I'm getting three. But this gives you an an idea and now if I click on uh, if I click on this link here I can enter my tracking number here so um, uh, I can just click on this link or I can enter actually the tracking number there's also uh, there's also the ability to set the pin and and here, here are my 
here's the file I can download now. So the download, as you can see, there was a little prompt that came up about the Java applet. This button here actually is a Java applet that loads in here. So if I click on this here, I'm actually using the Java method of downloading, which will give me the retries, acceleration, UDP and everything and all the benefits of File Catalyst. If I click on this link here, however, this is just an individual file that I can download uh, using just my web browser. So this is just will save the file into my web browser and download it this way. Uh, so let me just click here. I'll go to my desktop here, say save. And now I'm downloading all these files that I that I just sent. Um, so so this is the this is the email workflow, the basic email workflow. Um, the uh, the other the other system I wanted to show you is the ability to send to just uh, do a submission. So when I log in here, as you can see now are my two jobs. This one was my test job I did, and this is my shipped job that I just submitted with uh, to, to an email. If I click on this, I get a full information on, on the job. So when I uploaded it, when the files were accessed, and even where the recipient recipient has saved the files to. So very often what happens, recipients don't remember where they saved the files to, so here we actually uh, tell tell the uh, sender where they went. Um, if I uh, if I click on new job here, I'm going to show you the ingest part. So ingest is really simple. I here I have only one metadata field. I don't really have anything else to do here. I have to just upload files. Uh, I don't care as a sender who gets it, where it goes. This is just I'm submitting to a central location. And uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me who who gets the files. Uh, it just goes to a central Dropbox, and it's done. Of course, this this type of a job will generate uh, an email notification to the appropriate person. It can be also dropped into the right folder. It could also have uh, maybe a script could be executed after the files have been uploaded. So there's several things you can do uh, with this type of uh, submission. So let's see how this all looks on the uh, administration side. So I'm going to now log in as, as init. Init is the uh, super user. You can customize the name, but by default we use init. This is the uh, super administrator that gets to see everything and do configure and do everything. There is also an ability to create an administrator that is limited to only viewing things. Uh, they cannot modify configuration. They can only pick up jobs, uh, create uh, or edit users, and uh, delete jobs, I think. And that's about it. They cannot make any configuration changes. They cannot, you know, uh, do any system maintenance. But So that would be a regular admin versus a super admin. So here as a super admin, I can see my three jobs. So in this case here, I have a, you know, this this is uh, the job here for, for this one was that uh, ingest job. So I can see here that everything has been uploaded, including the XML files. And if I click on get files here, here are the files that this user has submitted. And in the same fashion, I can get to the files of the other transactions, including the email transactions. But you can see here, here are the job for, for uh, job four for John, and you can see here the path how it's created. So, so that's that's on on the uh, on the users. So now, what I'm gonna, I wanted to show you something more advanced here. So I have two users on the system. I have user John and user Bob, and I want them to share a web folder. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go to groups and I'm going to create a new group here. Let's say call it uh, shared group, shared folder. And I'm going to click on share folder option here. I can select which site. I have two sites defined on my system. I'll get into that in a minute. I'll just put it on a default site. And I'll leave this empty, but you can once again specify the exact path where you want this shared folder to appear on your storage. Uh, in this case here, it will be, by default, will go under public folders group name. 
uh, permissions. There will be everybody will be able to upload and download, and I can even limit the uh, which order forms. I'm not going to worry about this here. I just want to show you the shared folder side. So this is my shared folders now created, and now I'm going to go here and add a my user. So I'm going to add my user John and add my user Bob. So now if I do a view user here, here's my two users added. So now let's log out and log back in as John. Well, we'll actually do this from Bob. We'll log in as, as, as no, okay, we'll log in as John and we'll show you how what user John will see now. So user John logs in, everything is the same, but now if I click on file area, here's my personal file area, which I can only see, but now user John also has access to the shared folder group. And what this means is now if a user, if I upload some files in here, and let's say I'll upload another one, and delete it. The, these set of files now will be shared by this group. So b both user Bob and John will have access to the same files, and there will be also a re uh, an activity log created for for any changes. So you can see here that user John deleted a file, uploaded a whole bunch of files, created the folder. So all of this and these notifications, actions for upload, download, delete, they can be they can trigger automatic emails. So if a user John uploads a new file, everybody in the group can be notified that something was changed on the folder. So this gives you a, a certain amount of con, uh, collaboration where, where you know, uh, users don't have to worry because the email notifications can go out automatically when something changed. So, so that, that was one feature I wanted to show you. Uh, I only have a couple more minutes. I wanted to show you uh, one more uh, interesting thing. So now I have two users. I have user John and I have user Bob. And what I wanted to show you is that I want user Bob to only be to uh, be able to upload to one server and user John to upload to a totally different server. Of course, if they're using the shared folder, they have no choice. They'll be going to one spot. But if they do a regular upload, they'll be using different servers. So when I, I already went here, went ahead earlier and went to the uh, locations here. And this was the default site that is already created for you when you start the application. But I also went in here and I created a second site. So once again, I pointed it to localhost, same server, just a different username at this point. It's demo. So this proxy account is important because that's how FileCattle's workflow will access this, this path that you gave it to. So, so here I can modify, let's say, this to be going to site 2. You can do a check site here. And you can do a save. Okay, so now I've created two different sites, and now I have to just edit user Bob. And I want user Bob to be going to site two, and user John is going to remain on the default site. So now when the user Bob logs in, they'll be they'll be going to he'll be going to a completely different place to upload the files. So if I go to new job ingest and I upload the files here, this will actually be going into a different location. Um, and when the user John logs in, it also will be going to a different location. So now if I log out here and log back in as a regular user uh, and go to uh, get files here, you will see that this is actually now going to site two you can see here it's going to a different site and a different path so like this you can modify it um, one more thing i wanted to show you i'm sorry for going over my time uh is if if i want the use, user bob to be only able to do ingest and no distribution so the way i would do this i would do this via a group so i would create a new group and i say ingest we'll call it let's say group ingest uh, site it doesn't matter I'll just I won't do a shared folder or anything but I'll give this order form only ingest uh, order form assigned to ingest 
Now what's going to happen is, and I'll add user Bob to it, and I will have to go and remove user Bob from this group here because this group has actually both order forms, right? So, so now user Bob has only access to ingest, uh, to the ingest order form, and now when the, he logs in and clicks on new job, you notice the drop down now disappeared. You don't have the drop down to what the user can select. It goes automatically into the submission because that's how we configured his group. Of course, if a user Bob is in several groups and these groups have assignments to several different order forms, a drop down will reappear dependingly on the groups that they are assigned to. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, it for my demo. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the last, uh, I will just wanted to give you, uh, thank you very much for this introduction. Sorry for taking a bit longer, but I was trying to cover everything in as quickly as possible.